The immediate past emir of Kanu, Mohammed Dusanusi's lawyers, on Tuesday vowed to challenge his banishment and detention by the Kanu state government. Sanusi's legal team, led by former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Abu Bakr Balarabe Mahmoud, at a press conference in Kanu, said government should release Sanusi or face a legal action. They also raised the alarm over the deposed emir's personal safety and security. The lawyers stated that they had not been able to speak to Sanusi since Monday, adding that the location of the place where the deposed emir was being detained was meant to cause him maximum trauma and distress. Sanusi, who became the 14th emir of Kanu on June 8, 2014, was dethroned on Monday by the Kanu state governor, Abdullahi Ganduje, and banished to Nasarawa state. Secretary to the state government, Usman Al-Haji, who announced Sanusi's deposition and the appointment of Aminu Bayero as his successor, said the immediate past emir was removed because of total disrespect to lawful instructions from the office after state governor. Joining us in the studio to analyze what will be described as political crisis in Kanu State um, is social commentator Saidu Basharu. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, let's, let's look at um, the determinant of the Amir. Uh, some have said it was inevitable considering his non conformist uh, persona. What is your take? Do you agree with that? Um, yes, I think he saw it coming. Um, uh, the, tr uh, the detronment was going to happen anyway because uh, here's somebody who was not afraid, you know, to, to change things, to uh, reform. And unfortunately, um, I don't think um, uh, they're ready for the kind of leadership that he, um, he wanted to bring. But knowing his, uh, knowing his um, persona, um, why would he take that position considering, you know, it's like you, um, be, you're supposed to protect, you have direct access to the government and yet you speak in public against activities of that same government? Um, well, let's not forget how he came onto the throne. It was um, a little bit controversial, um, but here's somebody who, like I said, is is not afraid to speak his heart, and um, he's a change change agent. Now, um, concerning uh, government position, yes, he does have access to uh, make uh, recommendations, but it's limited. And considering that the present governor, right from time they've had their differences set out, so that's made made it very difficult for him to make any impactful uh, change. Uh, to some, it's a surprise to know the Emir could be removed in such a manner. Could you explain to us some of the, uh, the, tr the traditional, uh, the hierarchy that comes, brings about this kind of uh, leadership and how it is possible to be removed this way? Yes, um, the Emir usually is hereditary. It, um, they pick Emirs from the descendants of the um, Fulani, yeah, the caliphate people, and uh, uh, removing an emir in the way that they have done here is not new. There's a precedence; it's happened before. Um, once you uh, you violate certain constitution, because now we have there's there's been a change. In the past, we have you know traditional rulers also holding political appointments, and now from the advent of the uh, military junta, all of this was, uh, you know, diffused in a way. Uh, it's been a little bit difficult now to separate that traditional institution, you know, from political influence. So um, definitely, there's always going to be friction between the politicians and the traditional uh, leadership. So uh, for Kano. Um, It's it's uh, it's unfortunate that it happened that way. It okay, let's happen. let's uh, we already know from statements uh, by Sanusi that he has accepted that it is God's will. It is time for him to move on to other things. But his lawyers are saying they are going to take up a case to uh, see if he, the dethronement can be reversed. Is it reversible? Is there any precedent? It is. It is. It is reversible. He has every right to uh, contest the. Um, the decision of the governor, 
Um, however, he has come out to say that he is not going to contest the decision, but they are now contesting his detainment. He has been banished, and uh, that is where they have a problem. But that in itself, it's also a practice. Once an EMEA is removed, the, track, uh, the practice is that the EMEA is banished, removed from where the new EMEA would be installed so that you don't have uh, you know, friction. But he has already accepted the tournament. What really are they afraid of? Um, his lawyer said that was not his original uh, location of choice. Nasser State, he would have preferred to uh, come to Lagos. The decision is not left to him. There is a practice. The Emirate Council and the governors would decide where he'd be banished, and he has to remain there for the rest of his life. But suddenly, things change, like we saw with his father, his uh, grandfather. Things can change. Okay. But that is, I mean, if you look at uh, in other climes, like in uh, UK, we've had uh, kings who abdicated, abdicated and yes. you know were moved to France. So it's not unique to us alone. It okay, happens. well, now that this has happened, what, I mean, he, he's already got an appointment from the Kaduna, Kaduna State, State government. government yes. uh, it, some would say this might be a blessing in disguise because um, the position of the emirship was sort of, sort of stifling his uh, creativity and his financial genius and the world was losing out. What would you say to this? Absolutely. Um, I think... Uh, uh, Malin Sanusi has a lot to offer. Like I said, Kano is not ready for the kind of leadership that he brings to bear. I mean, we're talking about women, uh, education. empowerment, education, banishing al Majri system, and all of that. Um, yes, uh, there's a lot that he still has to offer. If they can resolve this, I think Kaduna State stands to benefit a lot from him. What do we know about the new emir, Bayero? Bayero, he is loved by the people. He's a people's person. He's an, he's a, he's an institutional person, you know. So he's he not going to with, ruffle he's not going to ruffle feathers. feathers, you know, and I think that's what they want. We we don't take change, you know, uh, Isn't very that a well. dangerous thing for the people of the North, considering the issues that Sanusi and others have been highlighting uh, when it comes to out-of-school children, comes to um, early marriages and girl-child education, when a system that does not allow for change to occur like this, what precedence is there? What's the hope for the think, people of the North? Yes, it is, um, it is dangerous, but I think um, what Sanusi has also done is set the agenda for the new Emir to work with, you know, how would he, with the uh, acceptance that he has now, still, you know, uh, implement some of the things that uh, Sanusi had tried to push. You yeah. know, I see it happening because uh, he's also a reformist, but in a very subtle, don't forget that Sanusi had, he had um, issues multifaceted problem with government, with the state government, with a whole lot of people. But I think the new Emir would be more focused on, you know, changes within the Emirate. You know. But I also see something, I see a change. Um, the structure as it is right now, they have kind of diminished the power of the Emir. The yeah. old Emir, you know, uh, controlled practically the whole 44 local governments in Canada. Now there's... But now he's been restricted to 10 local governments, and this is because of Sanusi. Now he has to, he has to live with that. You know, so he has a lot of work set out for him. Uh, let's hope that this is a better thing for the people of the North. Let's hope so. Thank you very much for Thank your you. thoughts on the news.